to the Tough Hub. This is a brand new show brought to you by Tough Africa Global to educate you on real estate business and all the information you need to know about real estate. After 45 years of construction and real estate development in eight African countries, it is time to share my experience and it can only be done in the Tough Hub. We will be inviting experts who will give you facts and the right regulations on real estate development. Join us every week on our social media platforms for an exciting show. Welcome again to another um, uh, Tough Hub. Actually, this is a continuation of um, last week's episode. Uh, obviously, because it's so important to all of us mm -hmm. that we consult a lawyer. And today, again, we're privileged and honored that we have uh, uh, Madam um, Lubna Pensuda here. And um, last week it was, it, was, it was so educative. I mean, I learned quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And it all centered around see a lawyer before you go into any land transaction. And again, I will just relate it to, to health these days. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, I've been encouraging quite a number of people yeah. that just go and do your basic Check tests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'm, a, I'm a health advocate. You know, I mean, I am very, you know, and I say this out and I use this to to say this, that I, I am a cancer survivor. Okay. You know, I, I survived prostate cancer some 13 years ago. Wow. And it was detected through health check. Mm -hmm. I went through a health check, and then I was going through the health check. For men, you have to do your PSA, and a PSA was done, and noticed that my PSA was very high. Mm -hmm. And then the test followed. Quite a number of people have lost their lives because they don't do the basic test. Yeah. So I paid very little for consultation to a doctor and got the results that I had to then do the detail. So on the same note here, if you don't want to lose the millions, please consult a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Once you consult a lawyer on consultation, $100 or $5,000, mm -hmm. then all the fees will be stipulated and the details of what you need to do. So you will not burn your finger, you will not lose the millions in the future. Yeah. So again, Madam Farage, Farag Ben Suda. <laughs> You're welcome. So Thank you very much. Let, let's move on. Um, uh, we know that um, um, when people buy properties, uh, they go to banks. Mm -hmm. Actually, we are now, Tough Africa Global, Global is uh, one of the leading developers mm -hmm. that have been able to convince free banks to be giving out what I would call medium term mortgages. Mm -hmm. Um, namely um, uh, Trust Bank, um, Echo Bank, and GT Bank. Mm -hmm. We now get our buyers to get mortgages from them up to 10 years. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, that's, we want to know the difference between a mortgage and a deposit of title deed. Because when you deal with banks, especially when you're raising finance from them, mm -hmm. it's either you, ha you, you, you take a mortgage mm -hmm. or, or you, you mortgage your property mm -hmm. or you deposit your title deed. We would like you to elaborate on the difference between these two. Okay. Yes. Um, so thank you very much, and I'm happy to hear that you survived. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the the difference is um, mortgages is uh, as we said, you deposit your you deposit your title deeds, you sign a mortgage document, and this document is also registered, and there are fees to pay on it, and when you default on your loan that you've taken from this bank, mm -hmm. um, the bank now has an immediate right to go in and say, we want to sell this property. Be because you've deposited the, you, I won't say deposit because we don't want to mix the terms, mm -hmm. because you've mortgaged it mm -hmm. to the bank. And then mm -hmm. there's legislation, there's law um, that, that guides what do you do in, a, in case of a, of a mortgage. So it's a quick, it's a more expensive procedure, but it's also quick for the bank. And banks prefer it because it's, it's, it's very um, secured. Um, be because when, if you mortgage your property and I go in to the, uh, and I meet you and I want to buy your property and I do a search, I'll see that the, your property has been mortgaged. Mm -hmm. When you are successful with your facility and you pay it off, there's a deed of release. I'll also see it when we do the search that, oh, okay, this property was mortgaged and now it's released. Um, well, with the deposit of title, uh, you, it's not registered. But there's a document that uh, lawyers would advise the banks to file. Just to, it's like a ca it's a caveat. Mm -hmm. So it says, "Hello, the world. Just know that this the, this um, originals are deposited with this bank." Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
but it's not the most secured one for the banks. Um, so that's why they prefer mortgages. But it's, uh, it's a different process. So now when you default on your loan, the bank sues for the money. Mm -hmm. So you're not, now the bank is not going in for the property, it's going in for the money. Mm -hmm. And the bank says, you owe me this money, proves their case, and if you're found liable, the court says yes. But because the bank has already this property and they know, because not usually they'll have to search, mm -hmm. if they know, okay, you've got this property, they now take this property and say they want, they will now tell you, we need to sell this property mm -hmm. to get the money back. Mm -hmm. So it's not the most secure for the bank, um, but it's good for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the, the mortgage is more secure for the bank. And that's the difference. Mortgages are straight up, I will go for this property for this value, because of a pre-value would have been done, a valuation. And whereas with the depositing the uh, title deeds, you might have different, you might even deposit several title deeds to get the value of, of the finance that you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. But let me just add, you know, follow up question on this. Yeah. And um, uh, because obviously I have had experience, you know, mortgaging a property to a bank. I would like you to come up with, with the fees. And because uh, to me, I, I wouldn't want to now, let, let me allow it to come from you. <laughs> because there are, there's it's costs. That's what I'm saying, it's expensive. And, yeah. So I would like to know, um, what are the financial implications on, on, on the person who, who mortgages his property? Everything. Property? The bank has no cost. Yes. So everything is, is pushed towards the, the person applying for the loan, which mm -hmm. is pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's just the way it is. So what, what happens is, um, depending on the lawyer the bank has, mm -hmm. they would have pre-negotiated fees, maybe 3%, 4%, 5%, depending. Um, and who pays for that? You do. Yes, and amongst a lot of yeah. process. So, so, so you're saying, but no, I have my own lawyer. They can draft it for, you know, less. Mm -hmm. And the bank will say, no, you have to use the bank lawyer. So all of that gets deducted from your account. So they, deposit, they give you your money that you've asked for, and <laughs> they're taking out the, the lawyer's fee. Mm -hmm. Then you have the registration fees as well, what you're paying to the government as mm -hmm. well. You have the stamp duty mm -hmm. fees. And that's not, that's like 5%. Oh, and in those days it was 5%. The mortgage fees, they've changed. I can't remember exactly how it is, how much is it, how much it is now, but it's not 5%. They've re, it's been drastically reduced. Mm -hmm. But that's not all. Now, when you want to release Please. the mortgage again, you again have to pay the lawyer. The cost to the bank, they have some, they have their own cost. And then the release stamp duty again, because you have to register that document. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, it's the most costly one but it's favorable to the banks. Mm. It's not favorable to you, it's favorable to the banks. Yeah, I think it's good to know and lessons to learn here. You know, yeah. you know when, when you go to the bank and I'm, um, to borrow, people think that the biggest hurdle you have is to get the money from the bank, to get an approval. It's a very tedious process. So you do everything possible to convince the bank, you know, to get an approval. And once you get the approval, you know, there's an assumption that money is in your pocket for that amount. Let's assume that it's $1 million. But I will advise, based on my experience, that's when your trouble starts. <laughs> because you will realize that out of that $1 million, you have to go through the process of get, getting um, uh, a government, a, a minister's consent even to mortgage. Mm -hmm. So you don't get access to that money. You have to get a consent, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, to be able to mortgage your property. And it's a tedious process. Mm -hmm. And after that, there's also cost implications. Mm -hmm. yes. So I think it's one and a half percent. And it's been reduced, yeah. yes, from one percent, well, uh, five percent to one and a half percent. It went down. Uh, yeah. Yes, for, for government, for the consent to mortgage, mm -hmm. the big you, big you register, yeah. you know, to, to, um, um, uh, to, to government. Yeah. Then again, the release, after you've gone through all the hassle of using the, the money, interest. paying the interest, <laughs> paying the lawyers, now you think you've cleared your loan, they tell you, no, 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 you cannot <laughs> you get your can't. property, you have to now Repeat. pay a, for a release. Wow. So these are, this is why we're putting, we're on the show, mm -hmm. to really advise, you know, the public, mm -hmm. that there are all these things that you might not know, and I hope you learn from it. Yeah. So, um, um, well, I hope that uh, people also do talk to their lawyers ahead of time before they go into mm -hmm. these mortgages because some people are clueless and they find themselves in between and they cannot c come out of it at the end of the day. So do seek for advice, don't just jump into it. If you feel you're ready, then go for it. All right, and um, we'll just go on with uh, judicial for sale. Like what is judicial for sale? Okay, this is what I mentioned um, earlier, when you default. Yes. 
uh, okay, so when you default, the bank doesn't automatically take your property. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. live in a civilized society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they have to go to court to be permitted. Um, but, you know, it's an easy process because they, they can prove that you've taken the loan, these are the documents, you've defaulted your bank account, your bank statements, yeah. etc. cetera. Um, but then the, the good thing that protects you is that when it goes for judicial sale, you have a say in it as well. They just don't sell your property for any amount. So mm -hmm. say your loan is of one million the last say, and you have a property worth two million. Yeah. You know, if you don't have the protection of a lawyer who can guide you, maybe the bank will say, uh, we just want one million, and maybe the sheriff will just auction it for one million, mm. for example. Mm. So going via the court route, which is what we're provided for under law, you have a bit of protection. Mm -hmm. Because you, if you see that the, they're selling your property for even less than what you've taken the, the loan out and you know your property is worth more, mm. there is the avenue there for you to put in your defense or to, at the stage of sale where the sheriff is selling, to say, hey, no, my value of my property is this amount. You're, you, yes, the bank, I owe the bank one million, mm -hmm. but you can't auction it off for half the price. Mm -hmm. But reality is, when it goes for the sheriff sale, the judicial sale, it's, it's really an auction, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. you may have a valuable property, but if they aren't buyers to buy it at that value, right. um, you know, you know when you build a house, mm -hmm. yeah. what you feel your house is worth mm -hmm. to sell it yeah. is not the same as what someone coming off the street but to buying it off an auction will feel the value of that house is. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's, um, it's a process that we use via the courts, but mm -hmm. you get protected by the process too. Okay. Yeah, but, but, but Lumna, I mean, a judicial sale, when does it happen? When, when you have mortgaged the property? or only when you've deposited your title deed? Mortgage your property. So, so meaning that if you default, mm -hmm. if you default after mortgaging your property, you, you after depositing your title deed, they, what does the bank do? They go for, for uh, the money. How? So they file a suit to okay, say... So they file a suit. Yes. All they, all they have is they've had a deposit of the title deed. Yes. But the deed is not mortgaged to them. No. So, and now you've defaulted. Yes. So now they go into court to say you owe me that money yes right mm -hmm. so the, then if they win they've proven their case they get judgment for that then it's easy now i know you have this property you understand so i can tell the sheriff he's got this property because he had deposited his title deeds with me you know even if you in in anything whether it's banks or debts or whatever when you money judgments the issue is always after i win what can i get mm -hmm. what can i sell what, can, what do they have that I can sell? And this is the difference. With the mortgage, you go straight for the property. With the deposit of title deeds, you just say to the court, they owe me money. Uh, Lubna, what I would like to ask, really, it's um, more on a time frame. By the time that the bank, based on your experience, by the time the bank concludes that, yes, we are going for recovery, this guy cannot perform anymore, and we need to recover our money. He's deposited a title deed or a mortgage. How long do you think it takes? And probably if you can elaborate on the process, the legal process. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, I, I don't like your question. <laughs> 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 but unfortunately, uh, these are the challenges in the judiciary. Yeah. We have slow process. Yeah. You know, we have, we have the, the judges that are, they have a lot of files. Uh, case management is an issue um, in, this, in our country. We don't have enough judges. But even if we had enough judges, we don't have enough courts to put them in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so the process takes a long time. Now you have, um, you have um, in certain jurisdictions, you'll actually have a particular judge where that's all they do. Because it's supposed to be fast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be a slow process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in certain jurisdictions, they have the luxury of saying that this court is the court that deals with judicial sales or banking or financial aspects. So pay, you know, documents go in, they come out. But in Gambia, we don't have that luxury. So you file your process, you have a date today where the court mentions the case, checks the parties, has documents been served. Do you know, you don't get another date sometimes till the next month. Wow. So you get four weeks in between, for example. Mm -hmm. That is unheard of, you know, in, in many jurisdictions. Um, but this is what we were faced with. So that's a whole nother topic mm -hmm. for another tough hub okay. <laughs> All right. session. Okay. But, but, but generally, mm -hmm. it, it, if I tell you that uh, a case takes a year, 
mm-hmm. I may be lying. Wow. Maybe it's, it, it takes three years. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're lucky it takes six months, yeah. depending on the where, which judge you're before, what the other side is doing, whether the other side is cooperating or are they challenging you, you know, that what not. Is, is it going to a full hearing, mm-hmm. for example? So yes, it, it, it'll, it, it can take a long time. So I think maybe you'll also see that, that banks are not keen to go in. Maybe they'll keep calling the, def, the defaultee and keep saying, you know, trying mm-hmm. to maybe renegotiate sometimes. They don't immediately go because they do know. Uh, most of the banks know from from experience that it, it, it's not that it's not that short mm-hmm. uh, of a process. It can take a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow! 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 Interesting. But then, um, does one have any option in the face of foreclosure with the judicial yes. with the judicial sense? Yeah, you mm-hmm. could you could try to ne- renegotiate with the bank mm-hmm. to say, look, I've defaulted. This is this is now the loan that's left. Sometimes you'll see that, you know, the reality is the interest rates in this country is just mm-hmm. too much. Mm-hmm. I know they've been trying to reduce it uh, over time, but for, uh, there was a time it was, what, 26% mm-hmm. to get a loan? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you take a, a, a loan for a business to, and you have to pay the bank 26%, it, yeah. it doesn't Actually, make sense. You're yeah. not going to make yeah. profit enough to, to pay off your costs and pay the bank. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so the issues, you know, there's a lot of issues in, in these things, but, but what you could do is just renegotiate mm-hmm. and don't let the matter proceed in court in a sense that you could, maybe you could renegotiate the mortgage, the term mm-hmm. again and, and spread it out again. Yeah, yeah. I know it is legal, but let me also wear my cap where I've served as a, as a board director mm-hmm. um, at, at uh, one of the main um, banks. Mm-hmm. in the Gambia. And uh, to be specific, Trust Bank. Mm-hmm. I served as a, as a board member for 18 years. And obviously, you know, um, uh, certain facilities need to come to the board for, for approval. Mm-hmm. And again, because we are on a tough hub, um, banks generally uh, don't give that much value to the property. Like, as if, okay, here my, is my property uh, and, and I, I'm depositing it or I'm having a mortgage as if you can then have the money. Banks look at your cash flow. Mm-hmm. How feasible, how viable is your business? Mm-hmm. The means that you have to pay. Mm-hmm. But again, then we will elaborate on another tap hub when we have bankers in here. Mm-hmm. So uh, the last thing that obviously banks want is to start going to court. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I will tell you personally, in my 31 years of being in business, Hardly do you see me going to court. If it was for me, lawyers would not make money. <laughs> Just on going to court? No, no, no. I always want to settle. Yeah. But, but, but the reality is that, yes, uh, people default, and, and you have to go through the process of recovering your money. Mm-hmm. Um, um, uh, I wish, again, as uh, we're talking to uh, public officers, officers, that we address these issues. Because um, uh, the faster these things work, uh, then there are implications all the way in our economy. Mm-hmm. Because, but the slower things are, it blocks up other, others that can positively impact yeah. the lives, not only of government, but, but in general. Absolutely. So um, let me be a bit political. Mm-hmm. I heard one of the aspirants yesterday with like his presentation, he addressed the judiciary. Mm-hmm. So we hope that um, uh, the presidential and, and aspirants and, and, and political parties will have this in their, in their, in their manifestos mm-hmm. to address the challenges that we have in the judiciary. From an economic point of view, you know, we are economic operators, uh, we are in business. We would like to see an improvement in the way the judiciary works in terms of speed. Of justice. Justice, fast track. Mm-hmm. So I don't know whether you want to elaborate further on this or we just move on. Another tap off. Another tap off. <laughs> Another tap off. <laughs> you you don't so like the question. Talk. No, it's so okay, much to talk about. <laughs> good, good. So, so uh, Mariama, you, you go now. On. Yes, like, uh, what are the few challenges private lawyers face and how do you tackle them? Uh, in terms of the real estate industry? Yes. Yes, yes so the, the challenges are we have difficulty in um, conducting these searches. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, we, it's, there's just not enough uh, facilities that permit you to be able to carry out these searches mm-hmm. and you're obligated to to do that mm-hmm. um, so that makes you you know not not working up to your standard now I'm not even saying I, I want to clear clarify here that you know the lawyers will do the job right mm-hmm. 
-hmm. you might reality is go into meet a lawyer who won't necessarily do the job right yeah. but why do I advocate that you must see a lawyer it's because we have regulations that we have to abide by mm -hmm. we have a complaints department you could you if I do something wrong you could complain to the before suing me you could complain to the general legal counsel and they will look at the case they'll look at your complaint they'll look at you know they'll contact me, mm -hmm. ask me to defend it, etc. And then they'll hold hearings mm -hmm. because lawyers are uh, uh, self-regulatory. And on the General Legal Council, it's not only lawyers, it's judges. Um, there's like a, the Justice Department is sitting there, the Attorney General, etc. Mm -hmm. So it's a broad uh, spectrum of, of people. And that is why I say you're better off going to a lawyer whom you can complain about if they don't do the job right. Mm -hmm. You could actually go to another lawyer and say, this, this is what this lawyer did. They were supposed to do their job right. Mm -hmm. Than not going to a lawyer at all. Mm -hmm. um, so we have the challenges of doing the searches. And then we have the challenges of the, the getting the consent. You have the client trying to do this project and we can't get the consent. Yeah. But there are some lawyers that you go to and they seem to just get the consent pretty fast. Mm. So again, it... Mm. You know, this is, these are the challenges. There's not, it's not equal. People in those departments, they know who they will do specific work for, who they, you know, for whatever reasons that they have, mm -hmm. or whatever incentives that they have, that not, it's not with all the lawyers. Mm -hmm. But actually, now, let's move on. Let, let's go deeper about your, your profession. Um, um, and and my, from my experience, um, as you know, or you might know, uh, that um, uh, Tough Africa Global now specializes in, in PPPs, public-private partnership. And um, uh, most of the time in my life, anything I do now is legal. You'll be surprised that I, at times I do more of legal than construction itself. For example, we're now stepping out into Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. And um, the process before we start you know, mixing mortar, brick and laying the bricks and digging the foundations, it might take me about a year or more, and it's all legal. Mm -hmm. From the stage of signing an MOU or an NDA, mm -hmm. which is a non-disclosure agreement, mm -hmm. you know, to signing an MOU, a JBA, the memorandum of articles, you know. So um, on the side, if for example, on, 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 on first side, if I were to go to uni today, if I was young and go to uni, honestly, I'll tell you, I'll go and do a law degree first, <laughs> then take up another profession. Nice. Because everything you do in your life now, you Space. need a lawyer. You need to have some knowledge of, yeah. of law. Mm -hmm. So um, um, now coming back to, to, to lawyers, we have seen a law school in the Gambia now. Mm -hmm. There's a law school. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously at the time that you graduated somewhat, how many years ago? Oh. <laughs> you could count your fingers. <laughs> and my toes. Yeah, your toes <laughs> of how many lawyers there were. You know, but these days we're seeing that the law school is graduating how many a year? Quite a number. Yeah. Quite a number. Quite a number. Yeah. Every year you're having a yeah. So, so I have a feeling that probably the simple um, uh, process of consultation mm -hmm. can even be done with, this, with these lawyers. I mean, because it's basic, you know, some of the knowledge that you need to have. You don't need to go to a, to a Farage and Andrews. I'm not denying with the, with the business. <laughs> But I'm just trying to simplify these things. That somebody who wants to probably buy a property of something that is cheap, mm -hmm. you know, much cheaper, can just be thinking about, we are talking about consulting a lawyer. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, what's your take on this? So, my take on it, um, unfortunately, I don't agree with the, 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 the way we're spilling out lawyers. Mm, okay. And the reason I'm, I'm not agreeing with it, but I used to teach there, yeah. um, and I taught advocacy, and I tried to do it. I, when I first started teaching, we had 28 students. Then we had 36, then we had 50, and then we had 60, and I said, I can't do it anymore. Because I could, I'm not a full-time lecturer, mm -hmm. so I could not devote the time that was needed for these people to get the benefit of true education. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, you're not giving them what they're entitled to. You know, I tried to take the standards that I learned from, mm -hmm. from the UK to bring it down here. Um, in the, and then she, you know, she was present when I, when I hired them to, to you know, do some acting for me, um, for the law students. But we're not training them as much as we should. Um, we're not giving them as much as we should. I think the law school should have permanent lecturers, pay them to teach them, mm -hmm. Great. to train them. Because this is different from, from the university. This yeah. is the practical aspect. Yeah. So what, the, what we did to combat this as a bar association, we said, look, we need to change our rules. 
we now need to force these students to actually come into our chambers mm -hmm. for a year or two years and mm -hmm. we can train them on the practicals that they're missing out. Mm -hmm. Of course, the little ones, they thought, oh, they tried to you know, take our livelihood away from, but we weren't. Yeah. We were thinking about the public. Mm -hmm. Can we release you? You graduated and now you go and give a consultation to this yeah. gentleman mm -hmm. and he doesn't know mm -hmm. that he has to go back 25 years. Mm -hmm. He thinks you brought the paper, you're so excited you're going to make some money of, of mm, this because mm. everybody gets excited about mm. money. And then you don't do what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. what, are you aware of the obligation to society? Mm -hmm. so, so I think it's necessary, and like you've done. Mm -hmm. you, when you started off, it was staff, mm -hmm. Mustafa and Jai. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now look at it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important. Yes, we need them to graduate, mm -hmm. but we as the lawyers need to build our law firms mm -hmm. so we can have 10, 20, 30 lawyers work, mm -hmm. working in a law firm and bringing up the standards. But unfortunately, we are just spreading ourselves out because we're not, either we're not hiring or mm -hmm. retaining them or the mm -hmm. young ones don't want to stay. Mm -hmm. So we need, and, and consultations are different, Mr. Jai. Mm -hmm. I may charge, let's say, 5,000. Mm -hmm. But if I have a junior in my office, they're not going to charge the same because oh, okay. it all depends on the experience and the level. Mm -hmm. So then now you have a selection in my office. Mm -hmm. Do you want to see a five-year mm -hmm. associate or do mm -hmm. you want to see a 30-year-old, 30 30-year experience lawyer? And then you have the difference of rates. What my rate would be, it's not the same as that. Mm -hmm. So this is, again, a way of developing ourselves and, 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 and improving our, our environment that we're in. So I'm not too keen about just releasing them mm -hmm. out there. For example, with TAF, I would say, yes, it's time. Mm -hmm. You need a legal department. Mm -hmm. You need to have four or five lawyers in there mm -hmm. who would be checking and mm -hmm. every little letter, you mm -hmm. know, anything, any deal that you're doing, whether mm -hmm. Sierra Leone, et cetera. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all, all, um, all, um, my, my hope is that all serious companies or, or huge companies that are coming, they have, just as you would have your accounting yeah. department, yeah. Mm -hmm. you have your legal department, legal department. Yeah. Yeah. you know? Good then advice. <laughs> it's important. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, I think every department should have a legal expert there yeah. to guide and advise on what to do. Well, thank you so much, Madam Lubna. It was wonderful having you on these two amazing episodes, sharing your knowledge and us learning from you and, of course, our wonderful viewers as well. Until we come your way next week on another TAF Hub on our YouTube channel, uh, Mustafa Njai Dash TAF. You can also follow the link on our screen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well done.